it's a relationship between two kinds of physical theories. On one side, we have anti de Sitter spaces, or ADS. These are used in theories of quantum gravity, often formulated in terms of string theory, or M-theory. On the other side, we have conformal field theories, or CFTs. These are quantum field theories, similar to the Yang-Mills theories that describe elementary particles. Now, here's where things get fascinating. This duality represents a major leap in our understanding of string theory and quantum gravity. Why? Because it provides a non-perturbative formulation of string theory with certain boundary conditions. It's also the most successful realization of the holographic principle. What's the holographic principle, you ask? It's an idea initially proposed by Gerard T. Hooft and promoted by Leonard Susskind, suggesting that all the information contained in a volume of space can be represented on its boundary. In simple terms, it's like saying you can describe a three-dimensional object using just two dimensions. ADS slash CFT gives us a powerful toolkit for studying strongly coupled quantum field theories. The duality is a strong weak duality. When the fields in the quantum field theory are strongly interacting, the ones in the gravitational theory are weakly interacting, making them easier to handle mathematically. This has been super useful for studying nuclear and condensed matter physics by translating tough problems into more manageable ones in string theory. This groundbreaking idea was first proposed by Juan Maldachena in late 1997, not long after Stephen Gubza, Igor Klebanov, Alexander Polyakov and Edward Witten further elaborated on it. By 2015, Maldachena's article had over 10,000 citations making it the most highly cited article in high-energy physics. So why should you care about ADS-CFT correspondence? In ADS, the geometry of space-time is described by a unique vacuum solution of Einstein's equations. To put it simply, think of a hyperbolic space, a space that can be visually represented as a disk tessellated with triangles and squares. Here's the twist. All those shapes are the same size and the circular outer boundary is infinitely far from any point inside the disk. Now, envision stacking these hyperbolic disks, each representing the state of the universe at a different time. The result? A three-dimensional anti de Sitter space, resembling a solid cylinder in which each cross-section is a hyperbolic disk. Time flows along the vertical direction of this cylinder, giving us a fascinating perspective on how space-time could be structured, but why is this important? The boundary of this cylindrical ADS space plays a crucial role in the ADS-CFT correspondence. Locally, this boundary looks just like Minkowski space, the model of space-time used in non-gravitational physics. This observation is the starting point for ADS-CFT correspondence. The boundary of ADS space can be seen as the space-time for a conformal field theory. This duality means that every entity in the gravitational theory has a counterpart in the conformal field theory. For instance, a single particle in the gravitational theory might correspond to a collection of particles in the boundary theory, and their interactions are quantitatively identical. Since Maldashina's groundbreaking insight in 1997, many different realizations of the ADS-CFT correspondence have been discovered. These relate various conformal field theories to compactifications of string theory and M-theory in different dimensions. Although these theories are not viable models of our real world, their high degree of symmetry and particle content make them invaluable for solving complex problems in quantum field theory and quantum gravity. In quantum field theory, the probabilities of various physical events are typically computed using perturbation theory. Developed by Richard Feynman and others in the first half of the 20th century, perturbative quantum field theory employs special diagrams called Feynman diagrams to organize these computations. Imagine these diagrams as depicting the paths of point-like particles and their interactions. However, this formalism has its limitations. The predictions it makes are only reliable when the strength of the interactions or the coupling constant is small enough to describe the theory as being close to a theory without interactions. This is where string theory comes into play. The starting point for string theory is the idea that the point-like particles of quantum field theory can also be modeled as one-dimensional objects called strings. 
The interactions of these strings are most straightforwardly defined by generalizing the perturbation theory used in ordinary quantum field theory. In the context of Feynman diagrams, this means replacing the one-dimensional diagram representing the path of a point particle with a two-dimensional surface representing the motion of a string. Unlike quantum field theory, string theory does not yet have a full non-perturbative definition. This means that many theoretical questions remain out of reach. The problem of developing a non-perturbative formulation of string theory was one of the original motivations for studying the ADS-CFT correspondence. As we've discussed, the ADS-CFT correspondence provides several examples of quantum field theories that are equivalent to string theory on anti de Sitter space. This duality can be viewed as providing a definition of string theory in the special case where the gravitational field is asymptotically anti-de Sitter. Now that we've delved into the fascinating applications of ADAS CFT to quantum gravity, let's explore how this remarkable correspondence extends its reach into the realm of quantum field theory and beyond. One physical system that has garnered significant attention through the lens of Adson's CFT is the quark-gluon plasma, an exotic state of matter produced in particle accelerators. This state arises for brief instants when heavy ions, such as gold or lead nuclei, collide at high energies. These collisions deconfine quarks at temperatures of approximately 2 trillion kelvins, conditions similar to those present just fractions of a second after the Big Bang. The physics of the quark-gluon plasma is governed by quantum chromodynamics, a theory notoriously challenging to solve in such extreme conditions. However, in 2005, Dam Than Son and his collaborators illuminated a new pathway. They demonstrated that the ADS CFT correspondence could describe the quark-gluon plasma in the language of string theory. By applying this duality, they managed to represent the plasma in terms of black holes in a five-dimensional space-time, offering unprecedented insights into its behavior. But the reach of ADIS CFT doesn't stop there. Over the decades, experimental condensed matter physicists have uncovered numerous exotic states of matter, including superconductors and superfluids. While these states are typically described using quantum field theory, some phenomena remain elusive under standard techniques. Here, the ADS CFT correspondence again shows promise. Condensed matter theorists, including Subir Sachdev, have applied ADS CFT to describe these systems through the lens of string theory, aiming to unravel their complex behaviors. For instance, string theory methods have successfully described the transition of a superfluid to an insulator. In this transition, electrically neutral atoms, often produced in laboratories using liquid helium or cold atom lattices, exhibit unique behaviors influenced by fundamental quantum mechanics parameters like the Planck constant. So, as we continue to unlock the mysteries of theoretical physics, the ADS CFT correspondence stands as a testament to the profound connections between seemingly disparate areas of science. From the quark-gluon plasma to exotic states of matter, this duality not only deepens our understanding but also bridges the gap between theoretical predictions and experimental observations.